this is Stuff You Like, you can call me Ursa, and I am back. Back to the comforting embrace of the Midlands where I have been doing my taxes, eating chocolate orange, watching Wimbledon. Wait, is it just me or does that bald boy look really familiar? And apparently, I've also been suffering from stress induced hallucinations. Never mind. It's British summertime, which means Wimbledon, overpriced strawberries and cream, rain, more rain, and the feel good sports movie where Paul Bettany wins England's most prestigious tennis tournament. Yeah, spoiler. And also prances about in his pants, for he is Paul Bettany and I think he's kind of obliged to do that in all of his films. So in spite of my complete indifference to tennis, I figured this was the perfect time to review this, the sportiest of rom-coms. And if you're a Sherlock fan to recommend a study in winning, which is basically what happens when you make this film NC-17 and sort of smush it together with the cast of Sherlock. The plot, it goeth thusly. Paul Bettany is the almost 32 year old Peter Colt, last hope old timer Englishman who gets a wild card entry into Wimbledon. He intends it to be the end of his pro career, which has frankly been heading downhill of late, and after the tournament is over, he plans to take up a job at a tennis club full of old women who wish to ogle him. We shall look forward to giving you a peek at our ground strokes, won't we, ladies? No, do shut up, Sylvia. While at Wimbledon, he meets Kirsten Dunst playing Lizzie Bradbury. And yes, I do have to say it like that. An ambitious and sexually liberated, but somewhat naive daddy's girl slash up and coming young tennis pro. They flirt a bit, he buys her fish and chips, and she's like, So, wanna have sex? And he's like, Is the Pope a Catholic? So the basic structure of the film goes tennis, hanging out and flirting, sex, tennis, hanging out and flirting, sex, tennis, party, hanging out and falling in love, flirting, tennis, sex, you, you get the idea. Not that you see any of the sex, because this film is rated 12, but the filmmakers would like you to know that Lizzie and Peter are having a lot of it. Regardless, Peter Colt starts winning matches, and then shockingly keeps winning matches, and the relationship between old-timer and newbie develops and deepens and causes problems, and ooh, a shocking twist I'm not going to tell you about right at this moment. And in the end, he's in the final feeling guilty about his booty call, and oh, the tension, and yeah, it's a sports movie, you know he's going to win. There's also a subplot about his family, including his waster of a younger brother and his parents who are having some issues, and both of these subplots are resolved by Peter winning. Tennis! The source of and solution to all of life's problems. That said, I really love this film. In the manner of Bend It Like Beckham and Love Actually, which I will cover at some nearer to Christmas-like date. It's sweet and daffy and rom-com-like, it's funny, there are interesting secondary characters, the main character is self-deprecating and snarky and sweet and polite, and also Paul Bettany. We've already talked some about sports movies in A Knight's Tale, which my astute commenters have pointed out, by the way, is mostly based on The Hedge Knight, so thank you astute commenters. So let's talk about rom-coms. Plot is driven by conflict, rom com plots are about love, therefore, rom com plots are about the obstacles in the way of that love. One, Lizzie's dad, and two, Lizzie's desire to win Wimbledon. And for the most part, any misunderstandings, and misunderstanding is a really big source of conflict in rom coms, will be sorted out by the end, and the characters will end up together. Nobody wants a romantic comedy where the leads aren't actually perfect for each other. This film must end with joy and rainbows and sunshine and long-term relationships. Even if you do have to break them up at the beginning of the sequel. See please Miss Congeniality. This textbook happy ending isn't always the case, and it hasn't always been the norm either. Roman Holiday, for example, is definitely a romantic comedy, but it ends, spoiler alert, with our two leads going their separate ways. In the final scene, the princess, instead of spouting the party line about how every city she's visited is equally awesome, gives her true opinion, and the reporter gives her back the photographs of her doing unprincessy things during their time together, thus preserving her reputation, probably at the cost of his job, because he loves her. And then he just walks away. The love that they have shared over the course of, well, the day, has made them into better people, but the obstacles to their love cannot be overcome without sacrificing something more dear to them. And so they just let go. And like I said in my original review of Roman Holiday, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But 
we can have the nice, simple, happy ending in Wimbledon because no such overriding duty exists. You can have it all, Lizzie Bradbury. Sex, love, and tennis. Whereas Peter is like, winning is good, sex is good, love is good, what's the problem? Lizzie struggles to reconcile them, but reconcile them she eventually does. For all that Peter is the main character, all of the conflict rests on Lizzie. She's the one with the most to lose, and she's the one who makes the decisions, for the most part. Lizzie is the driver of conflict because she doesn't see how she can play tennis and be in love with Peter. And like I said, she makes most of the decisions. She initiates the sexual relationship, she breaks it off with Peter when she thinks that it will prevent her from winning, she... Um, yeah, it's really hard to do this next bit without a spoiler, so if you don't want to know, you can just skip the next 10 seconds. Okay? Go. So Peter sneaks in to see Lizzie the night before her match and they have sex, and she subsequently loses the match and breaks up with him because of it. She's about to leave the country when she hears the apology which he makes on national TV because he realises that sneaking into her house for a booty call when she'd asked him to stay away was kind of shoddy. Okay, you back? Great. She accepts the apology and she goes to the dressing room and she gives him the pep talk that enables him to go out there and fight and win! Hooray! She's driving the plot and making the decisions and, unusually, for a rom-com, there are no negative repercussions on her career because of it. Rather like in Thor, the narrative wants you to know that Lizzie can have it all. The future is, of course, now bright for Peter, but he's at the end of his pro career. So he gets the glory and the wife and the kids and the fulfilling job, true, but Lizzie gets the husband and the kids and the multiple Wimbledon titles and the rest of her career, so all in all, I think I'd call it a win for both of them. And it's nice to have a rom-com which doesn't depend on deception to drive the plot forward. Unlike, say, 27 Dresses, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, You've Got Mail, 10 Things I Hate About You, though I do like that one. Yeah, there are a lot of examples of that. Anyway, if you haven't, I'd recommend you go check it out. It's fun, it's funny, it's fantastical, by which I mean never gonna happen because it ends with a British guy winning Wimbledon, and... No, but seriously, that ball boy looks really, really familiar. I think I might be losing it. Uh... I need help. I'll see you all next time. Bye! It's not good. I think I'm hallucinating. Like, I see the porn critic. Everywhere. In places he has no business being. Like, 2004 British rom-coms about tennis. What am I supposed to do? Ursa, you know, I'm really not that kind of doctor.